What should I plant in my lawn? That's the never ending question. We hear it all the time from homeowners. They want to know what should we put in our lawn? And there's a lot of options out there. Um, Kentucky bluegrass was the lawn standard throughout um, Nebraska for a long, long time. And it had some very, it has some very desirable characteristics. You can water it and keep it green, or in the summertime, you can let it go dormant. And it can withstand dormancy for extended periods. So it actually is a pretty water conserving species if you manage it that way. If you want to keep it green, however, you are going to have to irrigate it throughout the summer months. But it is sort of the Cadillac of cool season grasses, fine leafed, good texture, all of the above. And that's why it was so popular um, throughout Nebraska for pretty much the last 50, 60 years. Other option is turf type tall fescue. Turf type tall fescue, or tall fescue as it's often referred to, is what the breeders have done to come up with a finer leafed, more like bluegrass, um, cool season grass for Nebraska turfs, as well as throughout the United States and the world. The tall fescues lend themselves to a couple of interesting things. Number one, they tolerate higher mowing heights. They like to be mowed high, right? That's a positive thing. The other thing is, is that they have an extensive and very deep root system if the soils below it will take that. That deep root system makes them water efficient. Unlike bluegrass, which has the capacity to go dormant, um, tall fescue doesn't technically go dormant, but it extracts the water from deeper in the profile, making supplemental irrigation for the most part, pretty much unnecessary in central and eastern Nebraska. So that's why many people went to tall fescue. It actually uses more water on a weekly basis than bluegrass, but it extracts that water from deeper in the profile. Therefore, supplemental irrigation isn't necessary. Two kinds of water conservation. One goes dormant and doesn't use water or uses less water. The other one just extracts water from deeper in the profile. The only problem is, is with turf type fall tall fescues is in certain soils, especially construction soils and new developments, you may not have as deep a soil type that would lend itself to a species that'll go deep, and you may end up having to water them under those construction soils, especially in the first five to 10 years of the lawn, watering them as frequently as you would a bluegrass land to keep them alive and green. Unlike bluegrass, tall fescue does not go dormant when it is water stressed. It actually can curl its leaves and go what we sort of foolishly call permanently dormant and it'll thin and not recover from from that drought stress. So consider that. They have pluses and minuses. And then perennial ryegrass is often packaged in the less expensive um, uncertified seed bags. And those uncertified seed bags usually have a white tag on them and they're usually dominated by perennial ryegrass. Perennial ryegrass is a misnomer, a misnomer in Nebraska. It's not a perennial. It may survive one year and winter kill. It may survive one year and die in the summer. It's prone to a lot of diseases. It's suitable for use on golf courses where the management levels are higher, but certainly not something I would want in a lawn in, in Nebraska. It just doesn't tolerate many of the extreme weather conditions and stress conditions that we have in the state. Those are all cool season grasses, so they start to green up in the spring when soil temperatures start to, to get up in the, the 40s and the 50s. Um, and then they go, they go off color, uh, usually after the first or second frost in the fall. So they have an extended growing season, meaning they have an extended mowing season as well. You might want to consider something like buffalo grass or even zoysia grass. These are warm season grasses that are green usually from about May until no later than the first frost. Uh, they have a lower May mowing requirement because they're not growing um, when it's cool like the cool season grasses. Um, some people like that, some people do not. Buffalo grass is the only native species we grow in the United States that was native to the United States or to the central Great Plains primarily. And it does lend itself to a very low maintenance lawn. So what's the best grass for my lawn? Depends what your expectations are. Depends what, you're, what you want to see in your lawn. The classic Kentucky bluegrass lends itself to that manicured, really tight look. The, the turf type tall fescue is a little bit lower maintenance when it comes to fertility as well as um, irrigation. So that's a consideration. And what's interesting is we see more and more people going with a predominantly tall fescue lawn with just a little bit of bluegrass in it to give the best of both worlds. Then, or you might consider the warm season grasses for their desirable attributes as well. There's a few choices out there. What's your end game? What do you want your lawn to look, look at? And make your choice based on what that end game is. Finally, always buy certified seed. If you're going to seed a lawn, make sure you, that seed has a blue tag on it. You're probably going to have to go to a specialty dealer 
um, that you know deals a lot with turf and other seeds and cooling crops and whatever. Um, they're available throughout Nebraska. Buy blue tag certified seed. All seed has to be tagged, and often it's seed it's tagged with a white tag. You often don't know what you're getting, or it may be on there what you're getting, but it's often not stated as to what variety or what cultivar it is. So always buy blue tag certified seed.